You welcome back. You're still watching Business Morning here on Channel Television. It's commodities time now, and we have uh, Juliet Adenuga, uh, analyst with Financial Derivatives Company, joining us for the second time this week. And Tuesday, we had to do virtual. Well, good to see you physically today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> good to yeah. have you. Yes, yeah, so we see a lot of movement with oil prices. Uh, as at the time you had this slide on, Brent crude had slumped. But later on, it's gained. It was back up a dollar. I mean, that's, that's the last one I saw. Yeah. And then it's all, of course, it's all connected to what's going on between Russia and the European Union. First, it was the G7 threatening price cap. Yeah. Now, the EU have joined in, and Russia is saying, well, we're not going to take this line down. Yeah, the, the, the oil price is actually faced with a lot of challenges now. A lot of factors are affecting what's happening in the oil, um, global oil market, because um, there are so many issues to consider. We, we notice that the dollar is getting stronger. We notice... Um, and pound um, is uh, getting weaker. weaker. Yes, and we notice we have the, the other aspects of um, interest rate hikes coming up, which we know can introduce a little bit of recession. And you know that that um, can also spell a reduction in economic activities. We also know what's happening in China. They are not yet done with COVID, and it's become a major each issue. A particular, um, a particular city that has more than 21 million people is on total lockdown. They are reducing or maybe restricting movement so that the, the virus won't be spread further. So you notice that um, globally, economic growth globally is not really looking so, so good. And that spells doom for oil price because oil price is driven by economic activities. It's driven by demand for oil. And when the economic activity is affected, it's definitely going to affect what happens in the oil market. And there are other factors. I told you before that ordinary speculation, sentiments, anything, any information from any major producer or your country can spike a change in any direction. So these are some of the things affecting the oil price globally and what we're seeing now with the oil price. Hmm. Yeah, very un uncertain at this time because uh, w if Russia has said that they're going to turn off oil and gas to European countries if they implement that price cap. Mm -hmm. So that one is a that's major, one. Is a major uh, issue. issue on its own. Yes. And then, of course, we have the 100,000. But I mean, I think you said on Tuesday that the 100,000 cuts by OPEC Plus will not make any difference. It's, it won't make any difference because it wasn't supposed to even be a, a long outstanding. It was just for a month. They're going to end that in October. So it wasn't meant to be, it was just something that they introduced for a short while and it wasn't going to make a, a, a lot of difference and it's ending in October. So I don't think we should just dwell more on that because even the effects it had had been overridden by some other things. Once <laughs> there are new information or someone says something or mm. something happens in any of the major players, you begin to see the price of oil tumbling up and down and you know, responding to what is happening at that moment. And now, That's why the mm. price can change twice, even in a day or more, yes. depending on what's Much, happens. I think more than three times yeah, in a day. Change. Then we have the price hike, uh, Federal Reserve, uh, the United States, we're expecting 0 0.75. Yes. Uh, this is part of the reason why the dollar keeps getting stronger. Yes. And then that, of course, affects other currencies and uh, uh, the price of oil and commodities. Even mm -hmm. crypto is affected. So what kind of impacts do we expect if they eventually put that 0 0.75? The US Fed is not even, they are so single-minded about dealing with inflation. And they are using the tool of interest rates, contractionary monetary policy. Let's hike up. They know what it's, it's supposed to have an impact of what? Reducing economic activities because people, the marginal propensity to save will rise up because it will become more interesting and more appealing to save and invest than to consume. So that is a tool that the US um, Fed is bent on using. In short, in one of the um, speeches uh, in Wyoming, on the 26th of August, Putin was very blunt and even said that even faced with unemployment, which we know a recession introduced through interest rates can bring, interest rate hike can bring, he said he still won't stop the focus. The focus now for the US Fed is to stabilize price. We are going to ensure that we kill this inflation, we curb it, we stop it. But can it. they really kill it? I mean, we see hikes, a hike in interest rate, but we do not see a reduction in inflation. So. But the first time, the last hike, you know, there was a drop from 8 points, it went down, from 9 points, it went down to 8. Mm. So you don't know what this particular one we have and we, we, the impact it will have on inflation. You can't really say, rule it out. 
they know what they want to achieve and you know they are single-minded about it so for now what they are focusing on is that and he kept emphasizing that in the face of any other thing he's not going to move so they are going to it's very very likely that they will each up and you know that makes the u.s economy more attractive people want to invest there so what does you know, it mean? What does a stronger dollar mean for a country like Nigeria, for instance? For instance, it, the, the stronger dollar means a drop in oil price. A stronger dollar means that it will become um, our, our revenue from oil is going to drop. And you know our external reserve has gone below, below the benchmark already. It's not really too good for us. A stronger dollar also means, a stronger dollar brought, brought about by interest rate hike also means that our debt servicing will become more expensive. It's not really too good a news for us. The only, the one aspect I know it's good is imported inflation if the hike reduces inflation can be, you know, better curbed for us or better for us, our import bill, you know. But in terms of maybe our mainstay, which is our oil revenue, the interest rate hike, strengthening the dollar, not good for us because the price of oil drops for that. And you know that is our mainstay, affects our revenue, <laughs> affects our forex reserve, and, and the debt burden also increases. I think that's the, that's the biggest uh, burden mm. we have to bear. Then Saudi Arabia, you said, is to cut prices for Asian and European buyers. In terms of? Oil. For Asia and Europe, yes. Well, well that's um, it's a, like a, a sentimental thing for Saudi. Okay, because of mm, the, the it's economic a stress. It's a sentimental thing. Just to, especially in European countries, for them. Germany and all of that, they're mm -hmm. really facing a lot. They're facing a lot. But Saudi is tending towards being more, you know, understanding of those other mm -hmm. um, Asian countries and relieving them a little bit of the burden of what is happening in the whole economy globally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then in Nigeria, I think we, we in, uh, Nigerians can sigh a little bit of uh, sigh of relief. 5% uh, telco excise duty suspension. <laughs> Should we celebrate or we won't know when it comes or not? Because we didn't know when they removed the subsidy in, in electricity. Yes. <laughs> but you know that in, in every tax, there is the impact and the incidence of every tax. The impact is borne by the first, or, you know, the first, so, the first point of call, the first person that pays the tax. But the incidence is borne by the consumers. So I think the, 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 the telecoms actually kicked against that because they emphasize that consistently there are so many taxes already existing. They know that the incidence will be borne by we, the, the consumers. consumers. So they, they emphasize that introducing this tax is going to, it's not even good for economic growth because it's a challenge to them to penetrate the rural areas, which is very capital intensive. They need a lot of you know, money to be able to penetrate. And we know that anytime there is up to a 10% you know, penetration of um, broadband in rural areas, it has a corresponding 2.5% impact on GDP. GDP per capita, it, it shoots it up. Telecoms is one of the main sources of um, revenue recently for the government. Yeah, ICT, you know? ICT made, uh, I think, the highest the, contribution to GDP yeah. in the last quarter. So they, they kicked against it. If we do this, these people not only will lead hamper economic growth in this direction, but also the, the people that will bear the incident, if they notice that you've introduced this, they can have alternatives. There's a VOIP. Voice over internet protocol where we have you can do calls through WhatsApp, you can do calls through Facebook now, you can use Telegram. People will just shift, and then the aim of government to raise revenue will be defeated because people won't make calls, they won't make direct calls, they will use all those other voice over alternatives to make calls. So, the, 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 I think they saw reason, the federal government saw reason with going this route and decided to look for other alternatives. But it's alternatives. just a suspension. I hope so. It's just the suspension. I know when we were talking about electricity and then we didn't know when it came on us and we were paying even more. But we have you alternatives. Just... <laughs> any. There are alternatives to calls. There are alternatives to making the records. You can use WhatsApp. It's not compulsory. They can introduce the tax. If it becomes so expensive, people will look for other ways of communicating. You can't for... Nigerians are stressed. The disposable income, people are trying to survive. It will not be easy to introduce any extra expense on people now. It won't be easy. People will push back against it. Even the telecoms were pushing back. They said, no, this is not good for our business and for the economic growth. 
of the nation. Mm. All right. So let's uh, just uh, see a little bit of what's going on in the com co commodity now. Right there, we see elevated price of cocoa, good for Nigeria's export revenues. Are mm. we making the most of it? Mm. They expected, they, you know, on, on Tuesday we were talking about the, the, the pod disease. The, yeah. So I don't think this um, price hike might be as a result of reduction in supply because they are dealing with the, 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 the pod yeah, disease. The other time it was because of fertilizer for countries like Ghana and yes. all of that. No, they are dealing with the pod disease and the challenge of excessive rainfall. Cocoa doesn't need excessive rainfall. Moist is good for it. And you know they are getting through towards the main harvest and they don't need that. So I think it's out of shrinkage in supply that this price we are seeing here is, mm. you know, is coming from. Mm. Oh, what else is happening with commodities prices? Yes, prices are basically we know that um, apart from the new yam, um, the new yam that dropped a little bit, Gary is still elevated, rice still elevated, fly elevated. Apart from the beans and tomatoes and the, the new yam that uh, recorded a little you know, reduction. How come, how come um, beans uh, is at... Uh, one year low, okay, 14,000. Yeah. What's driving that? Is this harvest season? The harvest is tomatoes also. Tomatoes, um, a little um, dryness, I think, is what caused about that change in the 3,000. And it, it, uh, more of import, um, more supply from harvests. And then the beans too, harvest is what is affecting the price. But basically, it's almost like the same thing with increasing most commodities mm. in the markets in their prices. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Juliet Adenuga, analyst with Financial Derivatives Company. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you we'll for having follow me. The space. Thank you. I mean, all of these concern us, the gari, the yam. Yeah, that's what we eat every that's day. That's staple. It's staple, yes. <laughs> very, very important. All right. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for having me. We do have another conversation, of course, coming up, and it's not in commodity. You want to find out what it is? <laughs> All right, I won't let the bag out of the cat out of the bag until after the break. This is Business Morning on Channels Television.